All right. Welcome, everybody. It's September 20th. Back for another Node Operator Roundtable talking about the Leap 5.0 upgrade. Um, following up on where we were last week, uh, looks like actually, so we, we uh, on the deferred transaction side of things, as you know, we're uh, disabling them. We've already disabled them on Jungle in Kylin, and we're in the process of disabling them on EOS. And I can confirm um, we both received verbal confirmation from all the BPs that they've disabled deferred transactions, and we've run our substream. And the substream has confirmed there are no deferred transactions now getting executed on the EOS network. Uh, so now officially deferred transactions are disabled. Uh, so yeah, thank you everybody for participating, getting your your configurations updated, poking folks, all that stuff. Uh, much appreciated. Yes, yeah, to the, the to the pokers. You're very good at it. It's, a little, it's amazing. A little poking goes a long way. Yep. Um, so yes, thank you. Um, anyone have anything to add on that topic? Yeah, I also saw some upgrades to uh, uh, Leap 4, 0, 04 as well. So got some upgrades as well. Right. All right. I would just say that we should keep an eye on RAM usage uh, and see if it um, starts going up significantly. We may have to take some action. And just to be explicit, the reason that theoretically could happen is because of deferred transactions being submitted but not executed, right? Okay. Yes. It, it you anticipate like an increase in attempts to submit deferred transactions since they're not going through? Or that's just... No. Just is the build up of a queue of them not being executed? Yes, yeah. yeah, because they're not being executed, they're building up. And so we'll want to keep an eye on that if that uh, proceeds a significant increase in RAM, we may want to take some action to clear those out. Okay. And I've not heard any rumblings from anybody impacted negatively from the absence of deferred transactions. I don't know if, uh, do we have anyone from EOS support on the line? Uh, looks like Dario's here. I don't know if, if you've heard anything or have anything to report on that side of things. No, all good from our side, yeah. Other than the RAM increase on the contracts, that's the first one that came back. Yeah, is there a uh, a monitor for that? I was looking at the um, U.S. Nation stats page. Is there one for RAM usage? Matthew, do we have a RAM usage on the stats? We have an internal one. I don't know if there's a public one. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye out on it and maybe we can share our reporting periodically. All right, cool. All right. Anything else on that topic? All right. Let's move on then to early API node testing for Leap. Don't have much in here. Um, any news on this front? Any uh, Anyone having made progress in testing, running into anything, any questions, any blockers, or anything from uh, the ENF side to add or request? I haven't made much progress on internal testing, but I do know we saw over on Telos, they were smashing snot out of one of their nodes doing a get block with like thousands of threads and ultimately crashed the node due to open file restrictions. But uh was discussed to try doing the same abuse on a 5.0 node. So I shipped them full logs for testnet and mainnet on Telos to spin up a 5.0 and see if it does any different. I don't know if he'll have time to 
together all the benchmarks, but he'll have two different ones that he's smashing on the read only threads. So that may, and it's, it's heavier blocks, right? You know I mean? It's not just empty test that blocks. So that might produce some interesting information. Yeah. We improved handling of running out of file handles. Um, I believe that's in five dot. Oh, I don't believe that's in, in 4.0. And so, yeah, I'll be very interested. Is that in the pre-release 5.0 that you yeah. would be running? Okay, so yeah. that API test version. Anything else on API no testing? Yeah, no, I haven't spun that up yet. Okay. Well, this may be a short one today. And uh, Brian, anything from your side or Eric to add? You know, on this, I'll just say like we did make some updates to this uh, to this document. Um, so. Uh, if folks do give it another look when they have a chance, um, you know, has been updated. Uh, so some of the, some of the concerns from previous conversations have been addressed, um, or I, not concerns, confusion, I guess. Right. Um, uh, I don't believe there's anything else to add at this point. I will put it on the list to spin up and test. Thank you. Where are we at in general on that timeline plan? Or maybe that's the next piece you follow up with. I know deferred transactions and pre-testing were big, but when's the next? I don't know. <laughs> oh, right. So so next up would be um, a, re a release candidate one. Um, All right. At this point, we've kind of done, you know, the that pretty work of, you know, around deferred transactions. And so next up is actually having a re release that people can, uh, you know. Yeah, operate. jungle. So all the jungle BPs will be waiting on an RC1 or something of that equivalent to the next major milestone, sounds like. Right. In the meantime, yeah, test in our early API. And keep an eye on that RAM. All right, last call for topics, new or old, or anything to add on any of the existing topics. Uh, maybe I'll just continue with my question. There's nothing uh, else on the agenda. Now, I did look it out now that while we're talking. It's in the usayofmontrack.cpp. And it looks like the link key is a tuple of the requirement that count code and type. So it doesn't take into, it doesn't factor in the permission name. So, so in other words, like when it searches for that link, if it basically you're sending a link out with the same, with the same account code and type, uh, that will just replace the existing one. So in effect, doing like an unlink out versus creating a new one, which kind of is limiting or at least the application we're doing, because we want users to be able to, like a browser creates a permission that allows them to do certain things, that allows a browser to sign on their behalf, but this way I can have them do it, say, on their phone and on, on their desktop. Um, it, like, it's not here, I can kind of explain more. I was just wondering if there's any potential other way to allow that kind of behavior. Um, I would say, I mean, our is is our link off expert. Uh, he's done some kind of crazy things in the past with setting up some, some permissions. So, um, yeah, I, I would ask him, um, you know, we find the Eric, sorry, R -A -N. Uh, R -N. yeah. So yeah. R okay. Yeah. Our egg or, you know, posted on developers channel as well. He, he monitors that. So, I mean, e either way, um, Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. No. Anything else? 
I'll just do a shameless plug. Pamelo Season 7 application is open today. So if you're, uh, if you're participating, get those applications in. And otherwise, look forward to donations in one week from today. I'll say thanks to Kevin. He helped squeeze out a hot fix that <laughs> fixes some problems with Node. So he's, he's just an awesome man to, to squeeze in some state history fixes because I'm still breaking them on the reg. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody else. And have an awesome day. Cheers, everyone. Take care.